Hello and welcome to Ringing in Spring. My name is Shannon and I'm with Picky Booth Vintage and I am hopefully live. Let's see. Um, um, let me see if I can pull up comments. If you could see me or hear me, let me know. Um, Decoupage Queen retailers are going to be doing um, lives today and tomorrow. I think there's a few today, but mostly tomorrow. We're going to be doing lives demonstrating how to use the rice papers. You want to pay particular close attention because each retailer is going to give you a keyword. And if you mention that keyword, you can email decoupagequeenpapers at gmail.com for a chance to win one of three $100 giveaways. So you definitely want to stay tuned. And to all the different retailers that are going to be giving you a keyword, you only need three. So just write down three. Here is my project. I have this cute little table here. And this is my paper of choice. This is called Splashes of Roses. Splash of Roses. Gorgeous paper, and this is what I'm going to be putting it on today. I'm going to be putting it on here. We're going to leave the wood natural because it's beautiful wood, and then we are going to put some accent on, accents on it, and then we're going to put resin on the top because it's going to make um, the roses just pop. You'll have to see that when I'm all done, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. So. Now, this is the A1 size. This is a great, it's a, it's a beautiful size. Um, here at my store, which I'm with Picking Boots down in Fort Myers, Florida, I carry the A0s, the A1, and the A2s. The bigger papers for furniture, because that's what I do. I'm a furniture artist. So, <clears throat> um, but I really, really love this one, the Splash of Roses. So, I've already taken the time to just put down, I put some white here because when you put white underneath your rice paper, it will make the color pop. If you don't really want it to be a little bit brighter, then you can paint it a neutral color, regular color, or you don't have to paint it at all if you want it to be a little darker. But it will make a huge difference when you have your rice paper on. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is obviously this doesn't fit my shape. <clears throat> um, I usually use a different program to do my videos because I like to have two camera angles up close and far away, but because I'm not, um, for some reason my program won't let me do that on here. <laughs> so I'll try to get you in as close as possible when it's time. Um, but anyway, we're gonna start by, I'm gonna lay down the paper where I want it to go on my table. I'm not going to go around the edges. There's an edge here, like a lip that comes up. It's about this tall. I don't want the paper to go on there, so I'm just going to make sure I have the paper and the part of the design that I want. And then I'm just going to use my fingernail and kind of make a crease. <clears throat> a crease, uh, you could call it a score. You're just making a little indention in the paper. Whoops, I need to move that back. Just so... When I go to cut the paper, it'll be exact to the table size. So I'll do that real quick. Yes, the program that I use has great graphics and overlays. So I had all my keywords ready to go. I had my store name and everything down here. But we'll have to... It's probably a, it's probably a, a permissions issue with my software. I've never really gone live in somebody else's group. I've always gone live in my own groups, but that's okay. It'll still be okay. So now that I have my paper scored, let me show you this. <clears throat> I'll come up a little closer. So you can see the line, you can see where it's scored. So now I'm just going to simply cut around my design. <clears throat> Another nice touch, which is which adds to your rice paper is if you put crackle underneath that always gives the paper a more aged look that's a fun one <clears throat> we're not going to be doing it on this table though but just put that 
in the back of your mind for a project you, you may be doing down the road. Now you can get these rice papers from your local retailer or you can order them online. I think most of the retailers probably have them on their webpage. I know I have the ones that I have, I do. And uh, the nice thing about rice paper compared to, let's say, decoupage paper, is it's thicker and it's easier to work with and less wrinkles. It won't tear as easy. <clears throat> I know I have decoupage before with like napkins. And you have to peel back the layers. Well, you don't have to worry about any of that with this. And these, this rice paper is definitely not as fragile as the napkins. Okay, so you probably you might hear a little rumble in the area where I'm at. There's a kitchen and there's a refrigerator here. And I think it's going to die on me soon because it keeps making, when it turns on to cool, it makes this like a little rackety noise. So just ignore that. I'll, I'll make sure I talk over it. Okay, so wow, look, it just fits. Let me just lean it forward so you can see. Look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, <clears throat> normally when I put on a big piece of furniture, I start at the top with my decoupage and I go down little by little. I might be able to get away with just putting it all on at the same time because it's not a really big work area. So what I'm going to be using today is I have the Pent Art Decoupage Varnish in Glue in matte. Now see in the other program I had a little um, graphic that was going to come up in the corner and show it to you, but now I'll do it here. If you have any questions, Drop them in the comments. If there's another uh, retailer watching me, they can answer it. Or if not, I will answer it later. But the screen's far away, <clears throat> and I can't really see it. So, oh, look at this. This is just a new bottle, so let me just put this over here. It's This is thick. Ooh. Now, I always highly recommend that you don't work out of the original container. Just because, like with this table here, let me lean it down and show you. It's a bleeder. If you paint furniture, you know what bleeding is or tannins. You can see the brown tannins coming through. Well, I could ac accidentally transport or transfer some of that into my decoupage medium, and I don't want that. So I do the same thing with paint. Anything, I always just pour some out into a little container and put the top back on. That way I don't have to worry about ruining my pent art decoupage media. Alright, so I'm just going to start and I'm just applying a nice thin layer. Well, when I say thin, I just don't mean, I don't mean paper thin. I just don't want it to be too thick because <clears throat> if you put it on too thick, that's more or less where you get your bubbles or your wrinkles. Actually, I probably should go around the edge first. Let me do that. Just so I make sure I get my edge. I'm going back to make it even. Keep on plugging. Okay. My internet was struggling there for a second. I apologize about that. I generally don't have any problems with my internet either, so I'm not sure what. But you know, technology, you just never know. Okay, <clears throat> so I have a nice coat of the decoupage medium on there. Now I'm going to lay down my paper. And it doesn't really matter which side because it's all, um, it's all the same shape. I just want to make sure I get one corner lined up first. And then the rest, it should just be. Just pull up just a little bit. corner got away from me. <laughs> Hold on. All right, there we go. So I want to start at the top and I want to just kind of lightly lay it down here. 
and I'm just pushing very lightly just to make sure I get the paper to stick to the decoupage medium. Now some people will take uh, saran wrap and do that. What I like to do is I like to use my brayer, Sorego brayer, and then I just go back and I simply rub and that will generally take care of any part that I didn't um, push down with enough pressure but also get out the bubbles. Wow. I am in love with this paper. Again, this is Splash of Roses. Let me show you. Is that pretty? Now, <clears throat> my keyword, if you're, I'm going to say it a few times through the video. Like I said, I had a graphic, but I can't use my program for some reason to screw it. But my keyword is, actually words, is five sizes. So make a note of that. I'll tell you what you're going to do with that keyword in a little bit. But that is the keyword for picking boots for your part of your chance to win a $100 valued giveaway. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use the decoupage medium to go around the very edges just to make sure they have the edges down. I'm not going to go over the rest of the paper like I normally would because I'm going to be covering it with resin. And the resin will definitely make sure that that paper is protected. All right. Now, this is not the first time that I <clears throat> have put resin on a tabletop. The first time I did it was probably about a year and a half ago or no, uh, I don't know, two Halloweens ago. I made this really cool T uh, tabletop and it had um, decoupage queen. It was the, her paper at the time. It was the resin and or not the resin, the raven and the skull. That was fun to do. All right. So while this is drying, I want to show you the wood on this table and how pretty it is. So let me just lift it up just a little bit to fix into the. There we go. Now it fits in. So this is just a normal end table. I just have it on a lift just so I don't have to bend over and I can work on it. <clears throat> so I really, 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 really love the color of this with the paper. It's a beautiful, but they just blend well together. Like I'm not gonna paint this because it just works too well. I like this dark color. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna be using, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, wrong one. Don't want to put dark wax on that. That's later. I want to be using this. This is to treat the woman. And this is simply Big Mama's Butter by Dixie Belle. And this brings back your wood to a, um, it's, it revitalizes the wood so it's not dry. It makes it look new. And I'm using this big round brush because it really gets into all these crevices here, all this beautiful detail. Let me see if I can angle it down a little bit better so you can see. Um, let's see, this right here. Oh, there we go, let's try that. Just trying to adjust the light just a little bit because with this new setup, I'm not getting the, the picture that I wanted, but it's all right. So I'm going to apply this to my entire table while this is drying real quick. The feet on this are amazing. I'll have to, uh, let me see if I can raise it up just a little bit. They're like, they're claw feet. They're so, so, so cool. Let's see. All right, almost. <laughs> nah, still not getting it in there, but <clears throat> I will show you at the end. I'll just move my camera. You simply just put this on 
and a little does go a long way. So if I happen to put on a little bit too much, I'm just going to take a lint-free rag and go back and wipe it off. You can do the same thing with like Restore Finish, and you can get it to actually match the color of your wood. But this is pretty good. It's still dark. It doesn't have a lot of scratches, so that's why I didn't use that one. Okay, so again, I know I'm supposed to mention it a few times, so my key words are, write it down, this is for your chance to win a $100 valued stash from Jackie Posh Queen. My keywords are five sizes. And all you have to do to <clears throat> enter is you're just going to collect three keywords from different lives this weekend. There's a couple today, and the majority of them are on Sunday. Collect three different keywords, and then email decoupagequeenpaper at gmail.com for your chance to receive. Now look at how beautiful. See how deep and I'm a furniture painter, and I love to paint furniture, but this, with the rose paper, the splash of rose, it just looks so pretty. And once the resin is on here, and it, it'll just look gorgeous. I want to get this wood looking pretty real quick. I'm just taking a little lint-free rag just to get the extra butter that I just put on here. Again, I was using Big Mama's butter, but you can use hemp oil. You can use, um, there's all kinds of stuff. Restore a finish, any kind of wax. All right, so let me put it down just a tad. Oh. Okay, so that way you can see the top a little better. See the splash of roses, how pretty that is? All right, I can't see the comments. Um, oops. But I'll answer the questions at the end of my live. Or if there is, like I said, a retailer online that wants to answer them, that'd be fantastic. <clears throat> this is still drying, but what we're going to do is we're going to mix our resin and get that ready. Um, now, when you're using resin, it doesn't matter what kind you use. Just make sure you listen to their health warning. There is a warning on these packages for a reason. Use gloves in a well-ventilated area. I have a fan here, so I just put that on real quick. Just because um, I take those warnings seriously. Because if there wasn't a, something uh, that it could cause, it would put the warning on the box. So, gloves and um, for the resin. All you need to do, and this is most resins, I think their most ratios are one to one. So I'm going to use this little cup here, and I'm going to go up to that top line. I've already kind of pre-measured, so I know. And I'm going to pour it in. If you haven't worked with resin before because you may be just nervous, they do, like I have these bulk bottles, so you get smaller kits. And it's really easy to use. Just make sure you follow the safety. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to put that in uh, my bucket. Where is my little, here it is. So I'm just going to take part A, dump that in. <clears throat> Keyword, five sizes. Make sure you write it down so you forget. I'm really excited to see what the other retailers are going to be making today. It's always fun to see. If, um, uh -oh. It's always fun to see what other people create. Now I'm going to take. Part B, exact same measurement. 
This one is not as thick as the first one. Put that to the side. Now I'm not using the quick set resin. The quick 10 minute set resin actually dries white and I don't want to use that. I want a clear resin. So I'm just putting it in my bucket. That's definitely stinky. Okay, so now I'm just going to stir it up. And while I'm stirring, I'll just chat for a second. Actually, I can answer questions. Does anybody have any questions? Hi, Diane. With this resin, I'm going to pour it on. I'm just going to pour it on and then let it help it get to all the different corners because I want to make sure I have an even level. One time I did it on a tray and it wasn't even and I left a few spots out so it dried with some holes and then I went back, tried to fill it, doesn't work. So I had to put a whole total new layer on. Okay. You don't wait for the deck device to dry completely. Oh, it's drying right now. I've got the fan on it. It's fine. Plus, I'm in Florida, and it's really hot down here right now. Actually, it's kind of a beautiful day, but it's, um, I think we have some rain coming in the next couple of days, so this is going to be nice for us. We've been really, really hot here. Yes, um, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but uh, this is gorgeous paper. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous paper. One of my favorites. But I also, I love the abandoned paper, that's that rusty truck. So many of the papers are beautiful, and they have so many different styles because sometimes companies just do all flowers or um, they just try to they stay in one kind of theme. Well, decoupage bean has all different styles. Grunge, flowers, nature, etc. I can call you poetry. Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks, Diane. It actually, it will. Now, you won't see the dried ending part on here today because obviously the resin, this resin takes, they always take 24 hours to dry. But I will definitely post pictures in this group so you can see the final project and how it comes out. I'm just stirring it. Now, when you stir it like this, in this type of resin, you get a lot of bubbles. You're supposed to let it sit for a while, or you can use your heat gun to get the bubbles out. And that's what I'll do. But I'll probably just do that off camera because so I don't bore you with my heat gun. I might do a little bit of it. We'll see. Depends on how the time is going. I don't even know time it is. Alright, so again, if you're just tuning in, if you want to enter the giveaway, they are giving away three packages up to $100, and you just need to get three keywords from three different stockists or retailers, and my keyword is five sizes. And I'm assuming that's because there's five sizes of rice paper. <laughs> the big ones. Okay. So let me take this glove off and let me just see how the paper is doing. Feeling good. Now I bought these blue gloves. I don't remember what the name is because I also have the clear ones, but they don't stretch and I have big fingers and I always wear jewelry. So these blue ones really stretch and are a lot easier to use. Um, so the paper is still a little bit wet, but what I want to do is I want to add just a teeny bit of an accent on here because the table is so dark and this is so pretty with some, it's very feminine with the roses. I want to use a little bit of this, it's called chameleon wax, so I'm going to have to take my gloves off. <laughs> um, but what it's going to do, it's just going to... I'm going to put it just on the details, but it's going to have a little bit, it's going to pull the pink out. 
And let me just show you. Let me get my little screwdriver here. <clears throat> I use gilding wax a lot. This one is called chameleon wax purely because <clears throat> it starts off this color and whatever you put it on, it'll change. So like this color is kind of like a yellowish color, but on dark, it turns pink. Chameleon. So <clears throat> with gilding wax, you can use your finger or you can use a little brush. I'm just gonna dust it on with my finger. I'm just making sure that I don't have any excess of that, of the wax that I put on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I don't wanna make sure, I, have, I don't wanna have too much on my finger. Let's go. So I notice as I'm putting it on, it's that yellow color because as it's setting in, it's turning pink. And this is just enough because I didn't want to add paint because that would be too, too strong. This is just very, very subtle. And I'm going to bring the camera in closer after I get this one detail done because it is amazing. And I'll take close up pictures um, and post them in the group too. Now, gilding wax is meant for peaks. It's like the top of the part that sticks out. I'm getting a little bit into the valley, so I'm just taking that out just because it's not quite turning the color yet. But it is, it's gorgeous, and it's just subtle. Okay, so I'm gonna try to move my camera. <laughs> my, I will say them just second hand, hold on. Can you see that? Now. The camera is making it look almost purple, and it's not. It's really a pink, but when I take the pictures, I will, you'll be able to see it better. So that is what it's doing to the table. So I'm just going to do that on the accents real quick. Okay, again, if my program was working, I'm sorry, I just spent a lot of time on that program. Set it to everything up and it didn't, it didn't work. But um, my keyword is five sizes. So you write that down. Now you only need two more, but I highly recommend watching all of these today and tomorrow that you can. And remember, you can always catch them on the replay. You don't actually have to be, you know, you don't have to sit there all day and watch every single one back to back. You can catch them on the replay. So. So I'm going to do the details, and then I might do a little bit of the trim, and then we're going to pour the resin. I'm just letting the resin sit just for a little bit, just to make sure some of the bubbles settle. So pretty. Just gives a little bit of a pop. Okay, the last one. Again, you can use any of these type of waxes with your finger or a brush, whatever you like. I just like to use my finger. I'll take a look at it. Nice. I'll actually I'll do the feet too, but you can't see that on the camera right now, so I'll make sure I get those done before I take my pictures. Now, there's also another color. There's actually three of these. This one is, um, I put my screwdriver. This one is going to give a little bit of green. So I'm just going to put very little on here. Just, just because there's green and pink up here. Very, very little. Oops, that's a little bit more than I wanted, but that's okay. Now, if I decide that I don't like these colors, I would probably just take a little bit of dark wax and mute them a little bit. 
but already it's very translucent. Ta -da. And I'm going to add a little bit more to this one. All right. So that's that for now. I can actually go back later if I want, if I decide it's not enough. I can, there's a little line here. I can take my brush and I can hand put all of those in if I want to. Hand. But not right yet because I want to see what it looks like when the resin has set. All right, so the resin, I need to get my, my gloves back on because like I said, resin, you're working with resin gloves. Now these are the white gloves I was talking about. I only had one blue pair left. So watch how difficult these are to get on. They don't stretch like the blue ones. There it is. Email us at decoupagequeenpaper at gmail.com with three keywords. Here's your first keyword. This is the one from Pick and Boots. Five sizes. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, you can't get these ones on. So if you're going to get the gloves, get the stretchy, get the blue ones. All right. But definitely put these on when you're working with resin. <laughs> I want to say thank you for joining me. Um, this I love coming on live and doing fun projects. All right, here goes. Now this is just a, a plastic container that I had. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of Pour it on, and I'm going to try to make sure I get out every last bit here. And what I'll do is um, I'll roll this table closer to the camera so you can see. <clears throat> Normally I have a second cam camera angle set up, but... All right, there we go. Put that to the side. Let's see if it comes, if this helps any. Mm, well. So now the trick is to get an even layer of the resin. You can take the table and, you know, rock it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my fingers to help push. I want to make sure I get it in all the corners and along the edges. So I'm just going to kind of just help it. And this, you want to do this too because once you put your resin down, if you don't have enough, you need to immediately make more and put it on while the resin is still wet because once it's dried, you'll have... You can't patch it. <laughs> Learn from my mistake. Or at least I couldn't patch it. Or I did a horrible patch job. <laughs> all right. Oh, you can just already see it's, when this dries, it actually looks like there's a piece of glass on top. And this <clears throat> resin will protect this tabletop for a very long time. All right, I need to get my glasses on so I can make sure I can see that I'm getting every part. I want to make sure I get it all the way up to the lips, the edges. Again, I have my fan blowing on me so I'm not directly inhaling the resin. last thing you want is a hole because it, you will see it. All right. Bum, bum, bum. Oh man, it's looking pretty. Oh, and putting the resin on top, it has kind of given it like a, I want to say like a vintagey look. It kind of like maybe a sepia filter, I guess you could say. I, I don't know, but it's looking beautiful. Let me, oop, I missed the corner here. Let me just get that real quick. And because I let the resin settle for a few minutes before I put it on, most of the bubbles went away, so that's a good thing. But again, if you have bubbles, you can uh, use your heat gun. Those will take them out. Uh, but for me, the few bubbles that I do have, 
it actually looks like it's older, like it was supposed to have those bubbles there. And it makes this table look old. Well, it is an old table. I mean, you saw it. <laughs> it's an older table. I didn't do any research on it, but it's definitely with the claw feet. It's definitely an older table. All right. Yes. So let me get these off. Oops. <laughs> the more you get to know me in this group, the more you'll notice I make messes and I'm pretty much a klutz. <laughs> um, again, my name is Shannon with Picking with Vintage in Florida. I'm a decoupage queen retailer and my keywords are five sizes. Make sure you email three of those to decoupage queen paper at gmail.com for your chance for, there's three prizes at $100 each. I'm not exactly sure what's in them, but I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. Just to recap, this is what we did. I found an old beautiful table, went ahead and put a coat of white paint down just to make sure that my rice paper popped. I didn't want it to be dark. Put a layer of the Pent Art decoupage medium, the paper, Gave it a light grain just to make sure the paper was on. We see we treated the wood to bring it back to its uh, beautiful luster. So it was kind of dried out. I had already cleaned it, but so we just kind of gave it some some love and then <clears throat> added a little bit of decorative gilding wax here. Again, once this sits up and I decide I don't like it, I can take it off. So or I can cover some dark wax. We'll have to let's see how that goes, but. That's the thing about lives. When you're creating, sometimes you're looking and they're like, mm, no, but you can always change it. So I'll st still decide on this. Pour the resin, and now we just wait for her to dry. So, again, thank you for joining me. Please stay tuned. There are other people. Um, I'm not sure when the next one is. It's a little bit later today, but then tomorrow there's a bunch of retailers coming on, and I'm sure they have fabulous products and projects scheduled for you. Make sure you make a note of all of the different keywords. All right, let me see. I got a couple questions here. Thank you, Decoupage Queen. Okay, will you sell the table or keep it? Ooh, the verdict is still out. <laughs> I um, like the Halloween table I created that was just like this. I wanted to keep, but I ended up selling it to a friend. This table, um, I really love too, but I don't know. We'll have to see. It's a hard question. That's the thing. I always create things that I love and it's really hard for me to let them go sometimes. All right, um, bring them on camera. Oh, uh, okay, so anyway, thanks for joining me. My keywords were five sizes, Shannon with Pick and Boots Vintage, and I will post the pictures um, probably Monday, because it needs to set up and tomorrow's Sunday, and I'm not sure if I'll be at the store tomorrow but definitely by Monday, I'll have them up in the group. All right, you guys, take care, and thank you so much for joining me. All right.